Tony Abbott is a likeable guy. Sometimes even Julia finds him fun. He's plain spoken too, and that's good. Finally, he's very fit, and that's impressive of course. But he's not, in my opinion, fit to lead this country. I know that's tough to say, a damning assessment, but I think I'm being fair. Anyway, you judge. He's not fit to lead us because he has no vision. Vision is where you, as a leader, are prepared to go out on a limb, to use your powers of persuasion to take us somewhere we haven't been, somewhere we haven't even yet seen, that we can hardly even imagine, and take us there because you know, in your bones, that it's right. There's one particular issue, very close to his heart, you'd think, and mine too, on which he could lead dramatically, and yet he does nothing. The story starts with his recent bike ride from Melbourne to Sydney. A fundraiser for Aboriginal scholarships, and certainly an admirable thing to do. But we were left wondering, was it really time well spent? It would have all made much more sense if, at the end of the ride, he put away his logos, the lycra, looked us straight in the face and said, If I'm elected, we're going to make cycling mainstream. And I don't mean what I've been doing here, sports cycling. That's in good shape and needs no help. No, we're going to make cycling look like it does where bikes are transport. Where bikes are useful, where bikes keep people thin where bikes get kids to school, healthy and happy. You know, we are the most obese nation in the world, and that just can't continue, both for reasons of personal happiness and public health costs. Those countries which use bikes as transport, well, they're way thinner than we are. Copenhagen, in Amsterdam, in London, in Dublin, in Montreal, in Minneapolis, in Barcelona, in New York, in Mexico City, in Bruges, in Tokyo, in Beijing, of course. In so many places, more and more, the bike is key transportation, and that's what will make it here. People look good on bikes. People feel great on bikes. School kids coming to class after a dose of cycling in the morning are very different kids for teachers to teach. Much perkier little possums, I can tell you. Dutch children, who of course all ride to school, are, according to UNESCO, the happiest in the world. Now I know you're rightly appalled. Uh, no helmets on these kids? Yeah, the, uh, the idiotic Dutch have, have decided that it's worth spending money on separated bike paths uh, to keep their kids happy. I mean, don't they know kids should be driven to school in SUVs and on buses? and that nothing matches the peace of mind of fear for your child. And all over Europe, old people are riding bikes in their 60s, their 70s, and even their 80s. Now, where was I, notwithstanding all of that? Yes, my government, if elected, will make sure that you feel safe on a bike so that you can ride along like this on a path that's not going to put you near a car or a truck. We've done the research and we've found that real safety is not on the head, and as we've been saying all along, but it's actually under the wheels. Well and good, I hear you say, but our distances and our hills get real, man. Good points all, but never fear. 
If we are elected, we will fast track new regulations, regulations that are now bogged down in some labor committee to get electric bikes really moving in this country. They have small electric motors which don't compromise the bicycle, but make those hills and those distances pleasantly doable. Here's a 70 year old man going up a famous gradient in the Dandenongs, Victoria. He's just had a stent put in his heart, but there's no stopping him on his electric bike. None of this is rocket science, it's all doable, it's all exciting. It'll just take vision and determination. And so with enthusiasm and some trepidation, I take a leaf from Boris Johnson's book, getting on one of his Barclays bikes with him for a London ride. Boris has just put 6,000 hire bikes on the streets of London, stately, getting around bikes. Boris is on the right track. In 1904, in 1904, 20%, 20% of journeys were made by bicycle in London. And I want to see a figure like that again. If you can't turn the clock back to 1904, ladies and gentlemen, what is the point of being concerned? Do you wish that Tony had this uh, kind of vision? Do you wish that he'd stop pandering, stop scaring us about boat people, and actually start leading on something? This could be his vision, you know. It is his issue. He has the inside track. And yet he falls before he even starts. Labor's no better, you say? True enough. Although Julia is planning to ban Lycra, she says. Yeah, I've got the whole Lycra issue. Yeah, yeah, you are planning to ban Lycra in this country. Yeah, just <laughs> Seriously, if they do get in and the Greens come to hold the balance of power, there is, I guess, the slim chance that we might become much happier peddlers sometime in the future.